Uh, we chose to talk about gun control and whether or not it should be gun control or gun rights in the US. The situation as it is today is that the right to keep and bear arms is fundamental rights protest in the United States by the second amendment of the bill uh, of the bill of rights of constitution of the United States of America and in the state constitution of 44 and the debit of about if it should be more registered in the many factories and dealing part the guns the way we chose to solve this issue was each of us choosing a president candidate or current former president and talk uh, about their opinions regarding gun control and how they want to solve it Tonight's guests are Barack Obama, Bernie Sanders, Hillary Clinton, and last but not least, Donald Trump. I agree that every individual has a right to bear arms in principle, but I think we need to acknowledge that there's several gaps in our legacy legislation and therefore we should have a gun control that respects the second amendment i think we need to find a middle way because every proposal so far has been too extreme on either side of the politics and we need to find a gold middle way between gun rights and gun control each year more than thirty-three thousand americans are killed by guns now it's time for us to act the Second Amendment guarantees a fundamental right that belongs to all law-abiding Americans. The Constitution doesn't take it away, it just ensures that the government can't take it away from us. Our Founding Fathers knew and our Supreme Court upheld that the Second Amendment purpose is to guarantee our rights to defend ourselves. Uh, this is about self-defense, uh, plain and simple. I've proposed a strategy that I think will minimize gun violence in the USA. These proposals consist, among other things, of background checks, requirements, and uh, increasing the mental health care system. I agree that we should uh, start with more background checks for people who are allowed to buy guns, so that not everyone can go and buy guns, but I also think it's up to every state whether or not guns should be allowed, depending on where you live. Such as uh, if you live in a rural area or in a densely populated area, you might feel more threatened or exposed. If you live in a po densely populated area and people are more aggressive maybe, and, in a, and then in a rural area, there are not so many people and that you have to protect yourself against. So. I think it's also up to every state if guns should be allowed or not. Uh, I think first we need to get serious about prosecuting violent criminals uh, and uh, by by setting criminals behind law uh, behind in prison. I mean, yeah, uh, we can start uh, like uh, building up a society where gun control isn't needed and uh, people who. People should have the right to defend themselves against criminals, and uh, therefore we should start by setting criminals behind the bars. We should also have a uh, start a nationwide ban for assault weapons and high capacity magazines of over 10 rounds so that uh, people can be allowed to buy more rounds so they can't kill as many people if there's a mass shooting or something like that. Uh, I agree. Uh, regarding what you said about uh, dividing the power to each state, I think that you should give the gadget power to the FBI, so you have someone uh, completely responsible for this gun control system, uh, gun control check system, uh, and I think the FBI would do that well. Mm, yes, I agree, uh, because statistics shows that uh, each year where many Americans get killed and that's why we need to uh, make a register that's pretty strict and uh, we 
have to uh, make sure that the uh, person who's mentally ill not get their hands dirty on. Yeah. But, but there has been a national background check system in place since 1998. Every time a person buys a gun from federal licensed gun dealer, which is overwhelming the majority of gun purchases, uh, uh, they go through a federal background check. Uh, study after study has shown that uh, very few criminals are stupid enough to try and pass a background check. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and furthermore, I think we need to require that uh, those who sell firearms obtain a license. So it's not up for anyone to sell and buy. Uh, yeah. But we cannot yeah. blame the manufacturers and the uh, dealers of the misuse of their products. Just we can't uh, blame, uh, I don't know, uh, someone is killed by a hammer. We can't blame the hammer companies. So uh, we have to uh, make sure they don't uh, be held <coughs> liable for uh, the issues. Yeah. I'm not saying we should blame them, but I think if uh, we uh, make sure they have a license, we can uh, try to prevent some of the unserious sellers from uh, getting a hold of these dangerous weapons. Yes, there is very many illegal sellers around in the USA and nowadays and uh, uh, we have to crack down these illegal uh, gun traffickers and gun sellers. <clears throat> yes. uh, and I think we need to invest approximately 500 million dollars to the mental health care system in order to uh, both increase and improve the uh, exist existing system uh, and I believe that by doing so we have the opportunity to prevent more uh, mass, uh, mass shootings. Yeah, but there are too many states who are failing to put criminals and mental health records right and uh, keep them from getting guns, and I think that is one of the biggest problems. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And by increasing the mental health care system, I think we could prevent some of these. That's why we should also have an extensive background check where you include kind of these things. If the person is mentally ill or something like that, they shouldn't be allowed to buy guns. But I think we also should invest more in taking care of our people or the people who need to be taken care of because uh, we need to fix our broken mental health system. Let's be clear about this. Our mental health system is broken. It needs to be fixed. Too many politicians have ignored this problem for too long. Yeah. Yes, uh, I agree. Um, I think we need to go big in order to fix it. So I think we should, uh, minimum, invest $500 million. $500 million is it's too much. You're just taking from the taxpayers' money. Uh, yeah. I think, can, I think it's a small price to pay yeah. to save the lives of our citizens. Yeah. Yes, I agree with Obama. And given that 23% of all the perpetrators of mass shootings are mentally ill, this is a very serious problem that we need to fix as soon as we can. Yeah, I, I agree that we need to fix it, but it's just too much money to invest in such a... Yeah. Don't you think that all those lives are worth that money? <laughs> uh, lives <laughs> is not worth any money. Uh, you can't pay for a, for a, for a life, but... Uh, That's what you mean. Yeah. But uh, with this money, we will be able to save but some of those lives. But we can't say that certainly but i think we have to try to at least um better the situation some and i think that all of these 500 million dollars they will not uh prevent more death necessarily but uh at least some and i therefore think that that's where we should begin and we should also think about the loopholes which uh, in which way you can acquire guns without getting background check and stuff like that yeah. such as gun shows where yeah you can go and buy guns online or at an auction just uh, you, you just
just have to have enough money. Yeah, uh, but I think if we require that segment of firearms to have um, license, then we could prevent many of these uh, options yeah. and stuff like Only that. Only 10 states uh, at this moment have background checks at gun shows. So if Everyone this should have rule that. is, or this law is uh, introduced in every state, I think the problem of uh, gun massacres and stuff like that, that can be, uh, yeah. And I think if we uh, say that the FBI and ATF, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms and Explosives, if we say that they have uh, more of the power than each state, then we could uh, get a more general um, legislation of what's allowed and what's not, so that there's not any differences in each state. Yeah, I agree. Actually, um, national rights, uh, they have to be uh, like uh, similar across the country. And uh, by doing this, we can uh, uh, decrease the amount of people carrying guns uh, around with them. Yes. But uh, uh, I'm also, I agree by like, you need to have a gun where if you feel threatened. And uh, therefore, I the Second Amendment is very important for us to like have guns if we uh, feel threatened against like yeah. criminals yeah. and such. Uh, I'm not saying that we shouldn't recognize the tradition of hand gun ownership that we have today. I'm just saying that we should try to prevent the wrong people from getting a hold of these dangerous weapons, yeah. such as in my home state, Vermont. This is the most gun gun friendly state in the entire nation. While at the same, it's it's the state with the absolute lowest rate of gun related crime. So this shows that you can have very open and wide laws and rules about gun control and stuff like this. While at the same time having the lowest rate of gun uh, gun crime. Yeah. So this. I think that's uh, maybe a goal, but I don't think it's possible right away. I think we need to uh, have some laws in to begin with in order to uh, improve the situation today. Yeah, um, I don't feel threatened uh, or fear others. I fear people more if I know that there's a huge possibility that I may have a gun. And uh, that's why we need to get rid of it. You don't feel safer if you have a gun yourself. Uh, yeah, several years ago, there was a tremendous program in Richmond, Virginia called Pro Project Exile. It said that if violent felonies, felonies you, uses a gun to commit a crime, uh, you will be prosecuted in federal court and go to prison for five years. Uh, no parole or early release. I think we should continue this. Uh, yeah, but Obama's former uh, attor attorney general, Eric Holder, called the, the a cookie cutter program. That's ridiculous. I call that program a success. It keeps the people who've been using guns in bars and it will make a safer society for everyone. Uh, I see what you mean uh, and I understand why you, not, uh, why you don't uh, agree with my attorney. Um, but I think we need to try to help the people who uh, commit these um, crimes with guns and not only put them to prison and say that's that. I think we need to uh, see why they commit the crimes that they do and in many cases try to understand, yeah, try to understand yeah, why they're doing it and with uh, an improved mental health care system I think we'll be able to do that and so we just don't send them to jail uh, and say that you need to do your time but try to understand why they do it and try to help them. Yeah, but the numbers show that murders committed with guns in Richmond decreased by over 60% when Project XI was in place in the first two years of the program alone. Uh, 350 armed fel felons were taken off the streets. Yeah. Uh, well, it's great numbers. There's nothing to say to that. But again, uh, I know you think that expenses are important and we shouldn't and we should try not to have too many expenses 
but if we send so many citizens to prison, then that's a lot of expenses as well. So maybe we should try to move some of these money to uh, other places, maybe such as helping them instead of imprisoning them. So what do we think the best solution is for this problem? I myself think we should, I should, I think this should be up to each and every state itself. If, if, if it wants to allow guns, then it should be allowed, guns should be allowed. Yeah. yeah, but that will cause a problem nationwide if one I state, agree. that man in that one state can go to the other state where nobody has any gun arm and they can't protect themselves and yeah. he can go mass shooting and uh, and they can't do anything about it. I agree. I think there should be some common laws nationwide as to what's allowed and what's not. And I think that the ATF and the FBI should be responsible for the... Uh, background check requirements, uh, the system, and uh, making sure that it's updated and um, that each person who commits a crime it goes directly into the system. Yes, I agree with Obama. We need to have a strict system uh, which uh, where we have control of each gun out there uh, and the owners and who's capable of buying a gun. Uh, and I also think that we should uh, make sure that each salesman of firearms has uh, a license. I think that's something we should make sure happens because it will uh, allow us to get some more insight and control over the situation. Yes. Another way to fight, uh, like, I think we should fight crime. Uh, but uh, yeah, the law enforcement does a great job. Uh, but however, they can't be everywhere all the time and therefore the Second Amendment like the citizen can could help by having a firearm in their home and they could stop a mass shooting by having a gun uh, ready to like protect themselves. Okay. I that will I see what you mean. Yeah, that um, will decrease the killings. If we're, looking for, first. Yeah. if we're looking for one solution, what would it be? Expensive uh, background checks. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think most of us... I think we can agree, agree on that. that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we can agree on and that. Then, uh, and then address the mental, the mental health, health care system. But I don't think we agree the on the extent of it, how yeah. much money we should invest. Yeah, but so we agree that something has to be done. Yeah. And then, and then the manufacturers. We shouldn't blame them. Yeah, but I think they yeah. have to. And they, have they a federal have, license. Yeah, they have to be allowed to sell them. Yeah, I think we're done now. Yes. Thank you. Great debates.